from reinvigorating agriculture, directing livestock vaccine and drug design, automated agriculture machinery, to path precision technology drones, AI-driven solutions are revolutionizing traditional farming techniques into cutting-edge modern practices. In fisheries and aquaculture, AI has contributed to a more efficient fish stock monitoring and aquaculture automation. Through AI, food systems have become more sustainable and more intelligent, a necessary tool to combat the challenges in environmental conservation and global food security. AI-driven developments are impactful in the agricultural and archipelagic Philippine, and our homegrown experts take the lead in realizing this potential. Okay, so the task that Post assigned me today is about uh, uh, automation on uh, machines for agriculture. So I called it transforming agriculture machineries with AI and robotics. So the big question here is that how can AI and robotics help our agricultural industries. So what is the role of AI and robotics in agriculture? As you all know, we in the Philippines have been practicing AI and robotics for more than three decades. We started AI and robotics since early 90s. Okay? And as technologies evolve, we reached to a fourth industrial revolution now. But prior to that, uh, it was really the key of the economy of the country to really adapt and absorb these technologies. So in this fourth industrial revolution, can I? OK. The major role of AI and robotics is really highlighted for the growth of the country and the world itself. So because of that, uh, I am uh, preparing a talk about AI and robotics, which is tools in developing high value food products. Okay? This is the key to our uh, agriculture, which the problem is to create high value products out of this agricultural uh, industry. And then the second one is unmanned aerial vehicle in agriculture. A while ago, uh, we see the uh, presentation on drones. Uh, and I'm going to show to you a real applications. We use drones already for the uh, agriculture. And then, of course, the smart aquaculture. Okay, So, in this, I'm going to show to you how can AI help improve uh, the aquaculture industries. Okay. Okay. So, what I'm going to show to you, because I mentioned we are doing this three decades ago, some of the video that I'm going to show to you are the research and product we developed two decades ago with my students at De La Salle University. Now, one of the, uh, we're talking of high value products. So coconut has lots of product. And one value, uh, one, one product is the cocoa sugar. And this is very good for export. This is very good for people who have diabetes because it has low glycemic index. So the challenge is how to produce cocoa sugar in a way in a more efficient way. So let me show to you the process. This is the manual process. It is very crude. Uh, you have to cook the cocoa sap or the tuba in Cebuano. By the way, I'm a Cebuano also. So I'm fan of the tuba. We automate this process. So we make a robot arm to do the uh, steering of that. So we, we automate the process. Uh, anyway, it will take so much time. So uh, let, let's move on. So this is now the actual product that we develop. It is an integrated system wherein it has 
apogon to cook the sugar, uh, the, the sap. And it has a robot arm to steer, steer the sap. And we have a heating process also uh, because uh, the end part of that is still wet. So we use the uh, energy from the pogon for the heating process. So that's the project we developed funded by USAID Stride. And we partnered this one with cooperatives in Ragay. And that is very important because there is already a stakeholders. There is already a client. So uh, these are the cooperatives. These are the farmers in Ragay when we donate that product. Okay? So it, this is a classic example that we can do uh, real uh, high-valued machines for agriculture that the community will benefit. Okay? So that's one. Now, we are trying to address the, pr the problem there is it is bulky, it is big. Uh, it is designed for 50 liters of uh, cocoa sap. And we try to make it on a small scale. So uh, what if only one manangiti, one, one cocoa sap uh, uh, can, can, can get, can use this product? So we scale down now. So we, we develop a new model. Okay. This will be out hopefully in a six months time. So another value added uh, material here is that we want to find out if there is a residue other than cocoa. Because as you see in the process, we hit the sugar, the steam will just evaporate. So what if there's still a high value product out of that steam? So this is now a closed loop system, wherein uh, the output, the steam will be cooled down and we will look at if there are presence of maybe uh, uh, alcohol or whatever new substance. Okay? So this is part of our research. Another product that we develop is uh, for, uh, cook, uh, for our mangoes. Uh, selecting the quality of mango is laborious for a person to look at. And so we develop an automated mango uh, uh, selecting system. So can, can you run that one? So you can see the machine can uh, rotate, uh, able to rotate the mango. And we can classify the uh, uh, defects of that mangoes. Okay. Uh, we built this one for uh, Pilmic. Okay. So uh, Pilmic is the one uh, commercializing this now. So. Uh, we can select that this is reject, this is uh, okay. You can see our vision system can do that. So with the accuracy, you can pinpoint, okay, I want 5% accuracy, I want 10%. You can, you can put that one as an option. Okay. Now, we did this one, as I mentioned, two decades ago. One of my students has a, a canning uh, factory in Sambuanga. So their problem is to sort out a tuna. So this is, uh, we, we can sort out the sizes of the tuna, the classification, whether it is still fresh. So this is the one uh, you can see. That's a, a, a robot that water plants indoor, indoor, based on the pots. So in aquaculture, one of the big problem is giving food to the fish, okay? the feeds. Okay? That costs a lot. Now, if we can control, uh, feeding fishes by means of their needs, meaning according to their hunger. So we can control uh, the, the, the amount of feeds. So this is the idea here. Note that if we overfeed that one, it will pollute the uh, water because of so much uh, presence of feeds. Not only that, the cost, maraming wastage. So if we are going to underfeed also, it will deteriorate the growth. You, you cannot get the optimum growth of the fish. So we want to, to come up and use artificial intelligence to see to it that during feeding, the fish is hungry. So this is the behavior of the fish when they are hungry. They are unruly. So from that uh, idea, we know now that, okay, the behavior of this animal, of this fish, 
is hunger, so we can give food. So this is now, the behavior when the fish is full. Okay? So you don't need to give food to them. So in that way, we are assured that all the, 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 the food you put to the water was consumed by the fish and no wastage. Okay? And this is the idea of this fish feeding machine. So we can give uh, uh, analysis statistics what happened. Now, uh, this is the fish feeding machine. So you can see the fish around uh, below. So they are unruly, so that uh, fish feeding machine will dispose the feeds. Okay? So magbibigay siya ng uh, pagkain sa isda. And then when time comes that the fish is uh, already full, hindi na niya bibigyan yon. So the idea here is the integration of robotics and AI. You have an AI that will determine the behavior of the fish, and you have now a robot system that will activate feeding of the fish. So there must be really uh, a work in progress between AI and robotics. So can I proceed this one with the drones? We call it unmanned aerial vehicle. This is a classic application of how drone can be used to uh, monitor large farms. As a... Uh, uh, Mentioned a while ago, uh, you can select the path of the drone to survey uh, the farm. So we can use this path like parallel path, moving, and, and so on. From that path, you get video. You get pictures. So you have to analyze that. Now, our partner in Batangas, by the way, we're working this one with large farm in Batangas. Uh, we want to show to... Uh, rather, we want to study what is the motions, what is the works of their workers. We want to evaluate are their workers are really doing uh, 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 tilling far the farm, and so it can it can monitor that okay the, the, the farmers are really tilling the farm or the farmers are just walk, walking down. That's classic example for the owner to know what is going on in his farm. And it can be connected to his cell phone. And not only that, uh, it can monitor the growth of the farm. Okay, so like this, for example, uh, performance based on that, okay? So you can see there, uh, those uh, workers are uh, standing, but you have to analyze. Are they standing uh, just for uh, 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 working or just standing just for talking? So uh, you can see their motions. You can see their behavior. Are they sitting down uh, working? So that's uh, a, a classic thing that AI can do. You can see now the vegetation also. You can see uh, the sample result of leaf segmentation. You can see now the images, okay, the health, okay, uh, the weed. So you can distinguish the plants and the weeds. So in this case, you have now an idea, oy, hindi nagtrabaho yung mga workers ko kasi maraming weeds. Okay? So, oy, uh, kailangan ko nang mag-spray. So one thing I should emphasize here, for AI and robotics, for agricultural applications, our researchers should learn these sensors. Our researchers should learn computer vision, computational intelligence, that's the algorithm, and of course, the Internet of Things, okay? Because you have to uh, uh, do this in parallel. Now, for some issues and concern, <laughs> I have here some uh, things to, uh, to, to look at for us, okay? Now, in blue economy, satellite or remote sensing or drones or internet can, be, can support aquaculture and blue economy. Also, in space technology, applications to agriculture, satellite imagery is very important, and so on. So, this is really I want to recommend as a general policy. We have to introduce and strengthen the internet connections in our rural and agricultural areas. Why? When we implement, for example, farm to product, uh, farm to table, okay, we want to know what is the status 
of the productions in the farm. So our farmers supposed to be should relay to us their uh, status. At, at the same time, we can give them uh, information, okay, this is the cost, this is the way we can buy. We call it farm to table. But unfortunately, there are no internets in the farm. So we cannot get direct uh, information from our farmers. So this is very important. Uh, um, production output based on client demands, both foreign and local. Accurate forecasting of crop production based on data driven through environment condition, user demand, land preparation, and economic returns. And also, farmers are aware and in a position to demand reasonable prices of their products if they are kept with this information. Number two, educate and capacitate local farmers in using new technologies. Okay? Dapat matututo ang mga farmers natin how to use this AI. Okay? Dap kasi, uh, unknowingly, ginagamit nila yan, pero hindi nila alam. For example, they use smartphone. May AI na doon. Okay? But uh, it is not clear to them how to use it. Okay? So, how to use drones, cell phones, and other sensors to gather information related to the farm activities. This is very important. Introduce the concept of Internet of Things. And agricultural technicians in rural should be well trained also. We have technicians, agricultural technicians. So they know, they must know also this technology so that they can impart that one to our farmers. So there must be a reliable expert to interact with our farmers. Okay? And also the cooperative policies need to be revisited. Uh, based on our regional uh, uh, forums, NAST scientific forum, we interviewed uh, the farmers, we interviewed cooperatives, and they, 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 they had problems. A strategy in giving grants and incentives should be reviewed thoroughly as to effectiveness. There must be a proper audit on this. Encourage them to acquire highly specialized equipment like drones and other high technology communication systems. So those drones can be, uh, uh, sell, uh, can be given to the cooperatives so that it's easier for farmers to access. Uh, encourage them to do R&D and connect and collaborate with higher education institutions. Those cooperatives in the farms has the problem. So if we can connect them, our universities can connect them, immediately we can address those problems. So those research can be done. Allow them to access data from Philippine Space Agency for free. We have uh, uh, satellite or whatever, so it's easier for them if that is free. Together with the researchers, uh, this one is this is the major problem because they said about cost of tilling their lands. Okay, we have already uh, we can use tractors to till the lands, but still they have to pay a lot. They're going to pay five thousand pesos per hectare to plow the land. Now, you 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 ask people to pay this much, sabi na nga, karabaw na lang gamitin ko. Ayoko na lang gumamit ng traktura. Okay? So, it must be good to address these issues. Maybe, Department of Agriculture can make it a profit sharing, for example. Okay? So, okay, you use tractors, you use, so your output will be the one to pay. We, we share your output. That can be done, I think. And also the crop insurance should be implemented and taken seriously. Thank you.